communication. So this is what sets apart, I think, big tech uh, interviews in particular, is that the communication is weighed a lot more heavily. So there are probably a lot of places that give DSA problems. And then if you get the right solution, you'll, you'll, you'll almost certainly you know, get, a, get the green check, get a thumbs up, um, even if you're completely silent the entire time. Uh, this is not the case for big tech interviews. Um, so Rahul and I have given lots of interviews at Facebook. We are, we are trained extensively on how to get good signal on the communication abilities of the candidate. And this is because a big company has a lot of people. And in order for you to interact well with lots of people on these, you know, pretty much every project you work on at Facebook is going to have so many different stakeholders. You need to be able to communicate well. You need to be able to build these relationships to communicate your point in a clear way and be respectful of other people's opinions. Like if you don't have strong communication skills, you cannot survive in big tech. So big tech explicitly looks out for this during the interview. So some like extra thoughts here is, yeah, as mentioned before, when you are doing your DSA round or just any round in, uh, in big tech, you're not only getting judged on the quality of your solution or whether or not you, you got the right answer, you're also being judged on your communication skills. And at Facebook, it was essentially like a completely separate axis on like how we weighed candidates. So yeah, don't just kind of <laughs> be heads down and yeah, you get the right solution, but then you're completely silent the entire time. That is probably not going to get you that pass. And just as a rule of thumb, I, I think if, if you're silent for more than five minutes, that's probably a bad sign. This is a more conservative number two. Like when I was interviewing folks, if they were silent for like three or four minutes, I also thought that was like kind of weird. You should pretty much be talking almost the entire time. Like you should be explaining like your overall approach. You should be explaining the code you're writing. You, you should be letting the interviewer, like plugging them into essentially your thought process. There's another reason why big tech in particular cares a lot more about communication. And that's because when you enter into a company like Microsoft or Google, you're going to be essentially in a bubble where the technology, the version control, the code review system, almost all of that is gonna be custom for that company. They're so big that they've basically invented new languages, new frameworks, and you're gonna to have to learn all this new stuff. And so what they're trying to judge in these interviews is not can this person code, but can this person communicate ideas? Can they take a concept and deconstruct it in a way that I can understand, or you know, hopefully that in the way that they can understand if there's some back and forth in the interview, right? And so um, that requires a little bit more difficulty compared to a small five-person company where you're expected to know Angular 3 and you're going to implement a feature using Angular 3 and some CSS, right? Like I view those companies as more of hiring commodity coders, like people who can do some particular tooling thing and get it done. And there's not as much emphasis on being able to horizontally apply your skill to another domain. And that is really what big, big tech is about. And I think correspondingly, they'll also pay more for that adaptability. Yeah, and then to really illustrate this concept, I have this uh, meme I hacked together <laughs> for the presentation. I, I've seen this happen before. It's just really awkward where like the interviewee comes in and they just code and they don't talk. And I just don't know what's going on. And, and here's the thing about, uh, you know, about big tech kind of alluding to Rahul's PowerPoint is big tech doesn't really care that much about what you're currently experienced in. Like they don't really care that, oh yeah, with this particular language, with this particular framework, you can create this particular thing. Because as mentioned before, like big tech, they have their own custom stuff and it's always evolving. Like, uh, like these companies are big and successful because they move so fast. Their adaptability is super, super high. And they expect that from, from their engineers. And how we reflect this in the interview is we don't try to have them code in a particular language. Like generally with a smaller company, like you, you care a lot more about the tactical stuff. You go like, okay, we're a Ruby shop. We want you to write Ruby because we want to know that you can write Ruby. But Facebook and I pretty much, I think all the other big tech companies, they just go like, hey, write in whatever language you're comfortable in. Because like we, we don't really care about like your explicit tactical knowledge. We just want to care about your adaptability. So what that means is the interviewer is oftentimes judging a candidate writing in a language that they're not very familiar with. Because, um, you know, again, we're trained to essentially give the candidate this flexibility so we can look for fundamentals over experience. So if a candidate is coding in a language I haven't used that much, like I'm actually, not, I know JavaScript is super popular, but I'm actually really bad with JavaScript because I'm not like a web or like a node developer. I won't be able to know what's going on if you're a JavaScript developer and you're coding out this complicated JavaScript thing and you're not telling me how your code works. I'm going to be completely lost. It's going to be really hard for me to give you a pass because I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Quick meta point, totally unrelated. Alex and I have talked about how we want to inject 
more memes in our presentation rather than just text. <laughs> so I, I love this. Alex, I think you did a great job with this meme. I love this cat standing up. If you guys like it, throw us a, if you want more memes, just give us a reaction on, on Zoom. <laughs> um, we're trying to diversify, make it more media focused rather than text focused. But yeah, I mean, I agree with what you're saying, Alex. It's like, there really has to be an emphasis on communication. Um, and I've actually seen cases where the candidate doesn't even get the solution or they get a suboptimal solution, but I still give them a passing mark on the interview because I feel like they're communicating really well. And if I had given them one more hint or if we had a little bit more time, they would have arrived at the solution. So that's how important it is at these big companies to really emphasize clear communication and explaining your thought process.